If you've watched any of my videos before, you probably know I'm a big fan of Pandas, which is a Python package for working with and manipulating data. At the same time, I'm always interested in learning about the newest technology out there in data science. So what if I was to tell you there's a Python package out there that uses data frames just like Pandas, but it's orders of magnitudes faster. I mean, we gotta check it out, right? Now in a previous video, I did a review of some Pandas alternatives and the results were mixed at best, but there were a few people in the comments who mentioned Polars. So in this video, we're gonna talk about Polars, the Python package. We're gonna talk about what it is and how it was designed. And then we're gonna talk a bit about the syntax of Polars and how you'd write Polars code and make sure you stick around to the end of the video where I'll talk about how I feel Polar stacks up to something like Pandas and maybe if it's a game changer. So what exactly is Polars and what makes it different than something like Pandas? Now one of the key things is Polars is completely written in Rust, but you don't need to write Rust code to interact with it because it does have a Python package which offers a very similar way to Pandas to interact with your data. They say here, the goal of Polars is to provide a lightning fast data frame library that utilizes all available cores on your machine, unlike tools such as Dask, which tries to parallelize existing single threaded libraries like NumPy's and Pandas. So basically what they're saying is Pandas is a very important data science library, but one of its biggest downsides is it doesn't natively parallelize the processing across your cores on your computer. Then there are tools like Dask, which take the existing libraries like Pandas and try to make them so that they are parallelizable. Instead of being built on top of an existing library, Polars is built from the ground up using Rust. Polars is lazy and semi-lazy. It allows you to do most of your work eagerly, similar to Pandas, but it also provides a powerful expression syntax that will be optimized and executed on within the query engine. So basically what they're saying is Polars has two different APIs, an eager API and a lazy API. Eager execution is similar to Pandas where the code is run as soon as it is encountered and the results are returned immediately. On the other hand, lazy execution is not run until you actually need the result. Lazy execution can be more efficient because it avoids running unnecessary code, which can lead to better performance. To get started using Polars, you just need to pip install it. And I found that it installed pretty quickly and easily. Now that we have Polars installed, I'm just gonna import Polars as PL. And let's go ahead and print here the Polars version too. So let's get an idea of how to read in a data frame from Polars. A lot of this is similar to Pandas, so we'll use PL read CSV. Now, similar to Pandas, if we show this data frame in our Jupyter Notebook here, we can see a rendered version of it with all the columns and data. You see that actually displays the data types of each column here when we display it. Now, let's say we wanted to filter this data frame. So we'll actually call the DF filter, which is similar to Pandas query. And when we want to call a filter on it, we have to actually identify the column in the filter by this PL call. So let's take the sepal length and filter to when it's greater than five. And now you can see that we filtered here only to sepal lengths greater than five. But let's do some more. So let's do a group by the species. Maintain order is going to be true. And then we'll aggregate using PL all and we'll make a sum ag aggregation. And then let's print this filtered data frame. Just for comparison, let's show what this same code would look like if we wrote it in pandas. And you can see here, our results are exactly the same. So the syntax is a little bit different with polars, but you still get the same result. Next, let's talk about lazy execution. So we're gonna start here by reading the CSV, but then we're gonna call lazy on it to make sure we're doing lazy execution. We'll do our same filter here. And finally our aggregation. Now, if I run this, we actually don't see the result. And what we see instead is this graph showing us how the execution plans to take place. We just need to run collect at the end of our query 
and then it'll show us our result. The building blocks of polars are very similar to what we see in pandas. We have polar series and data frame. You can see here we have a random polar series, or you can create a data frame object just from data that you've provided. But more commonly, you're gonna be reading and writing from files, and polar supports all the major formats, many very similar to what you would see with pandas, including feather files and parquet files. Here's an example, I'm using read parquet to read a parquet file with some flight data. Once we do have a data frame like this, we can run commands like a head command, tail, describe, which will show us all the information about each column. We also can sample this to get some random rows sampled. Where polars is a little bit different, as you saw before, is if we wanna select a specific column, we actually need to use this select method on our data frame and then give it column names that we wanna select. And we can use star to select all, or let's say if we wanted to select just the origin column, we would do it like this. Or if we wanted to select multiple columns, we would just provide in a list of our columns to select. Or if we wanted to select everything except for certain columns, we can do PL exclude to exclude those columns. Now filtering is a way for us to filter down the rows in our column to a subset of the data. So let's take our flights data frame here and apply a filter on it. We're gonna take the column of the flight date and then run is between and let's give it a few different dates. And you can see now the data frame is filtered on this date column in between these two different dates that we provided it. Or let's say we wanted to filter a value in the column. Let's take this departure delay column and filter this where it's greater than 15 and where the column origin is equal to San Francisco. So this shows you how the filtering syntax looks. Creating a new column in Polars is a little bit different than what you might be used to with pandas. So we actually need to use this with columns method on our data frame to create a new column. This is similar to a sign in pandas. In here, we'll create a list. Then we'll run an execution on our existing column. Like let's take the average delay and then we will alias this as average delay. Or let's take this column and let's say if it's greater than 15, we will call this long departure delay. Now, if we run our head command on this, we can see we have these new columns. One has been assigned the average value of this delay column, and the other one is true or false for if the delay is greater than 15. We can also do some group by aggregations, and we do that by using this group by method so let's group by the airline, and then we're gonna call ag to aggregate on this. Let's take this departure delay minutes and get the average value of this, and then alias it as average departure delay. And let's also take the arrival time and get the max value of this. And you can see here, now we have every airline and their average departure delay and max arrival delay. And I found sometimes the print command is a little bit better than the rendered version for looking at these results. We can also combine data frames either by stacking them or do doing some sort of merge. In pandas, you would do something like a PD concat or PD merge. Let's see how we do it in polars. Here I have two just sample data frames that they provided in their tutorial. So if I wanted to merge or join these two data frames together, I would just use the join method on the first data frame to the second one. And this is similar to pandas where we can say left on A and right on X. And there we have our merge data frame. This method does allow you to give it a join strategy like left inner and if we wanted to just stack these pandas data frames on top of each other, we would use polars concat. This is just like pandas, but we're gonna provide how as horizontal. This is similar to the axis in pandas that we would concatenate with. Now there are various polars expressions that we're not gonna go into, many of which overlap with what pandas has. You could see here we could take airline and run unique on it. 
We could also get the number unique. Polars also has value counts, which is very handy. And the thing about these expressions is you can pipe them together, which will speed things up. This is sort of like in pandas, how you can chain your commands. Polars does that similarly. And with the lazy execution could be a lot faster. Lastly here, we're gonna to touch on why Polars can be so much faster than pandas. And it's because of the way that it processes tabular data and specifically how it uses this split apply combine approach to parallelize the processes that it runs on your operations. So you can see here in this example they show in their tutorial, if you're doing a group by aggregation on one of your columns in your data set, when it splits the data in different groups and applies your aggregation, this apply part is embarrassingly parallel, meaning that these could be done completely separately. And if you had more threads to run this execution on, it could be made a lot faster. Now, if you wanna read more about how Polars makes this faster, you can read it in their documentation, but essentially this illustrates how they use a smarter approach to multi-thread this processing. So all this is great, but the main reason why you'd wanna switch from something like pandas to pullers is because of speed. So let's test out the speed comparison of this. I'm gonna read in this flight data set that we were using before in pandas here. So let's take the same data set that we were working on before. We're gonna do some group by by the airline type and we're gonna do the mean, min, and max values of the departure delay column and the arrival delay column. Now, if we look at the results, it looks like this. We're gonna add the time it command to the top of this cell. It's gonna execute a few times and give us some metrics on how long it took. Here you can see it ran seven times and it averaged 2.7 seconds each time. Now here's the same aggregation written in polars. You can see that we had to select the column and then alias it to a new column name. But the aggregated results should look pretty much the same. So let's run time it on this cell and see how fast it is. So there's no doubt here, the aggregation in polars is much faster. We have a little bit over half a second to run this on average compared to the almost three seconds that it took pandas. And you don't need to take my word for it. This is a benchmark comparison of a bunch of different queries that they ran both from reading from a file or dealing with data that was already in memory. Lower is better and Polars here is in almost every one much faster than all the alternatives. So there you have a very basic overview of Polars. As someone who uses pandas in my daily work, I become so dependent on it to do data manipulation and data wrangling. Of all the pandas alternatives I've looked at so far, I must say, that Polars is the most impressive. It's optimized such that it, it can run much faster than Pandas code in memory when you're working with multiple CPUs. The downside of switching to Polars is that you'd have to learn the new syntax and to get the full speed advantage, you do need to understand how lazy execution works and write your code in a way that optimizes for that. Also, Polars is mainly for building data pipelines. It doesn't have a lot of the functionality that Pandas does for data exploration, like plotting, which is a game changer for me. But I'd say it's definitely worth learning. And if you have some really intense data processing that you're needing to write, maybe consider using Polars instead of Pandas if speed is your main priority. Thanks for watching this video. Let me know what you think of Polars in the comments below. It helps out the algorithm. Also like and subscribe. It's completely free and it helps me out a lot. So I'd really appreciate it. I'll see you all in the next video.